Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina for our online and live worship on this Sunday, September 11th, 2022. Please stand and join in hymn 569. Good morning. Good morning. 
Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues in its entirety in your service sheet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secret is hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as the Episcopal Church is the American branch of the worldwide Anglican Communion. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Elizabeth and grant her an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God looks at the evil humanity has wrought on the earth and on each other, knowing that evil itself will lead to destruction. God recognizes the inevitable end of human sin, mourning the truth. A lesson from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time it will be said to his people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes for me out of the bare heights in the desert toward my people not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them, for my people are foolish. They do not know me. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth, and lo, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation yet I will not make a full end. 
because of this earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black, for I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us all read in unison Psalm 14, found in your service leaflets. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is anyone who is wise, if there is anyone who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned back. There is none who does good. No, no one. They have no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord. They see, they tremble with fear because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people Jacob will rejoice the Israel and be glad. Paul witnesses to God's grace, giving his testimony as evidence that God forgives and transforms anyone who is willing to submit to the truth of God in Christ. A lesson from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he has judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example of those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. 
Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he is founded, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. True story. A few years ago, um, a couple of buddies of mine and I, we were in my truck, and we were going to, to visit another friend who lived way out in the country. It's a beautiful day. We're driving along, and uh, we decided to take a, a shortcut that would take us down a, a dirt road for part of the way. And as we kind of rounded this little bend, one of my friends, the guy that's sitting in the front seat, he says, stop. Okay, I stopped. He said, look. And he rolled down the window and he pointed into the pasture beside us. And then he does this. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? He said, man, those are screaming goats. If you'll scream at them, they'll scream back. And he does it again. I said, uh, take a look. He said, what are you talking about? I said, well, one, they're not screaming. And two, they're kind of white and fluffy. <laughs> those are sheep, not goats. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> My point is that sometimes the agricultural reference that Jesus uses kind of does this. It goes right by us. Because how many of y'all have flocks and herds? Oh, wait, we got one back here. <laughs> we got one. Okay. So everybody except one is probably going to wonder about the sheep reference. But you know, Jesus was speaking to his people, the people of his time, which makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense because you want, to, you want to illustrate the truth that you were proclaiming in a way that everyone will understand. And I don't know if y'all are going to understand why I'm going to use the example that I'm going to use. Because I'm not sure I know why I'm going to use the example that I'm going to use. Well, actually, I, know, I, I do know why. It's because of what today is. The 15th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke is called sometimes the lost and found chapter. There are three stories within this. Two you get today... Uh, you would also get the third next week, but next week will be the Feast of St. Matthews. And so we will have a reading that omits the prodigal son. 
But losing and finding means more, even in, even in just the words, than what we normally think of. Losing and finding. Apollo me is losing. Carusco is finding. In the original language, the words include the most extreme meanings. Not just lost, but actually it can mean dead or destroyed. And not just found, but actively sought out, actively discovered, and not only that, fully known. That thing which was being sought after. There is a completeness in those words that point to Christ's willingness to do whatever it takes to bring someone back into relationship, back into community. It's an action that can only be seen as selfless and when necessary, sacrificial. Ultimately, these stories are all a precursor to the cross, an example of the lengths to which Christ will go to bring his people back. No obstacle, no barrier too great. Paul, in his letter to the church in Rome, says it this way, For I am convinced... That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. From his teaching parables to the scribes and Pharisees, to his saving act on the cross, to the inspiration of those acts being proclaimed less than 30 years after his death and resurrection in Paul's letter, it's been clear from the beginning of our faith, when we wander, when we are lost, Christ actually actively seeks us out. And we are often lost. It may be because we've been battered by events in our life or in the world. It may be something deeply personal or something frighteningly public. But all of us find ourselves in need, desperately looking for something to hold on to for something solid to stand on, for someone to offer us a hand to cling to. I thought about what that looks like. Because to be honest, sheep imagery isn't as powerful as it once was. Most of us, except perhaps one, don't have flocks and herds we see on a regular basis. And even fewer of us have any sheep to tend. Although I think Sandy Fulton might. But I do know what the contemporary example looks like. I know what it feels like. I know what it means to be caught in the in-between time of needing desperately to be found but unable to even reach out for the offered hand of hope. And I know what the example to illustrate what God does in those moments looks like. Now, a lot of y'all have heard this before. This would be, what, The second time since I've been at St. Matthew's that Sunday falls on September 11th. Well, as I said, I know some of y'all have heard this before. But for those of you who haven't, and for those of you who have, I do hope it still speaks to your heart. 
And so as I have in years past, I'll pass this around. Let's start it over here. A lot of y'all know that I served as a chaplain at St. Paul's Chapel at Ground Zero. It is September 11th. It is 21 years since the towers came down. And I realize I'm telling you this because I have PTSD, okay? I know that. Um, but if you've lived through trauma and, and violence and you've, you've seen the aftermath, it's just kind of a part of who you are. But you can learn from it. So what I want to tell you about is what lost and found looked like. So after the towers came down, they called it the pile. They called it the pile. And rescue teams initially would go out looking through the debris, trying to find anyone alive. The, uh, the search dogs that were brought in, they would come into St. Paul's Chapel. And uh, because the pile was so hot, they would lay out stretched on the floor, the marble floor inside the church, uh, to cool off, to cool their paws on the, on the marble. The, uh, the firemen and the police would come in and just sit. Um, the pews up there, a few years ago, one of my children was up there, and they were taking the tour. Uh, and someone was talking about the, uh, the, the gouges and scratches on the pews, and they said that was from the boots of the firemen, uh, the police, when they would stretch out on the pews uh, to sleep. That's not true. Uh, they didn't like the example. It was from the, the butt of their pistols uh, when they were leaning against the pews, digging into it. But the point is that that relief effort, that search, that seeking after, went on for nine months. Once it was no longer the pile, it became the pit. And this is the example of what sacrificial love looks like. I was standing by the, uh, by the morgue. Looking down, the morgue was a series of uh, refrigerated trailers. I'm standing there with another chaplain, and we're looking down into the pit. And uh, what you would see would be uh, heavy earth-moving equipment. And it would scoop up a pile of debris and put it in the back of a dump truck. It would then ease its way up toward this dirt ramp that went down into the pit. And then it would turn, and uh, another, another earth mover would come in, and, uh, and with its scoop, it would scoop up the debris, and it would lay it out in long lines, about 50 yards long, about three feet high. I was looking down, and you see this long line laid out, and it would be uh, metal and, and stone, concrete, steel, just the, just the debris of the towers. And after it was stretched out in those 50-yard long lines, then you would see this happen. Hour after hour, day after day, for months. Sitting off to one side were a row of firemen in their turnout coats and with their gloves on. And they would come over and they'd form a long line in front of that pile of debris and they'd drop to their knees and they would start sifting with their fingers through that pile of debris, sifting through it. And if they found someone's personal belonging, uh, a wallet, a shoe, they would put it into a plastic bag. And if they found human remains, which they did for a long, long time. They would place it into a different colored bag. They'd put it into a red plastic bag. And they would stand. And then most often a lady named Linda 
would drive a John Deere graded gator down to where they were. And with great solemnity, they would march over and a police officer too would always accompany it. And they would lay that, that bag with the human remains into the back of the gator. And they would stand in silence for a moment. Very often there was a chaplain down on the ground with them who would offer prayer. And then it would ride up the ramp come around the end of the pit, come down the road. You know the big metal cross they found, the crossed beams they found? They mounted it right on the edge of the pit. And so it's right there, I could put my hand on it. And they would bring it up, and it would be taken into the morgue. And when it was opened by the medical examiners, you would go in and you would pray with them for whoever that person was. Now, you didn't know if that was a person from the tower or a person from the plane. You didn't know if it was an innocent civilian or a fireman who had gone up into the towers or one of the hijackers. But you still prayed. You still prayed. Over and over and over seeking that which was lost. It's a hard example to hear. It's a hard example to carry in your heart and in your mind's eye over and over and over, year after year. But it's also a powerful reminder of love and sacrifice. The willingness of others and I'm talking about those firemen and those policemen and those sanitation workers because they were there too. The willingness of others to do everything they can to find the lost. Knowing that they were not doing that out of anger, they weren't doing that out of hate, they were doing that out of respect and out of love. And when those persons were lost in plains and towers, Christ was with them. When they were found, Christ was there. Because nothing can separate us from the Good Shepherd who always seeks us out and always finds us. Amen. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Scott. Scott. Can you do it from here? For the microphone. Prayers of the people, Form 6, found in your service leaflets or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our family, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or trouble of any kind, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Andrew, our bishop retired, Rob and Paul, our priests, Pat, our Piedmont Convocation deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in this church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all those on our parish prayer list. Hear us, Lord, for, for your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For the people of St. Matthew's, for all who make this service possible for our food pantry, our free clinic, and our preschool. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. And now our prayer for spiritual growth. Gracious Father, we ask spiritual growth for ourselves, our families and friends, and especially for our family, St. Matthews. Grant us growth and understanding and willingness to be your body in this world. Empower us to live the mission of Christ to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples in joyful thanksgiving for the blessings of your presence in our lives. Compel us to share you with everyone we meet. May our numbers increase, our commitment deepen, our lives be joyfully yours. Make us a God-centered people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated. And now if our Christian formation teachers will come forward.
The words which I command you this day shall be upon your hearts, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the, and the wonderful, wonderful works he has done. done. Let us pray. God of all wisdom and knowledge, give your blessing and guidance to all who teach in your church, that by word and example they may lead those whom they teach to the knowledge and love of you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission Caitlin Roberts, Allie Fowler, Zach Pertulak, Jesse Bishop, Debbie Richardson, Debbie Rutledge, Gail Steller, Susan Pertulak, and Amy Holbein. May the peace of the, please stand. <laughs> May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. If you are new today to St. Matthew's, if you're visiting, welcome. We're glad you're here. There should be a card in the pew rack somewhere nearby. Please fill that out and put it in the offering plate or give it to one of our ushers or to Father Paul or to me so that we can welcome you and help you be a part of our family. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with thanksgiving.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's seek the feast. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the cup of salvation. For the mark of blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. For the day of the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. And my beloved, with the bishop's visit last week, we have restored the common cup to partaking of communion. So if and as you desire to receive by common cup or by intinction, please do.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that truly passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us stand and sing our hymn for going forth. Praise the Lord, rise up, rejoicing. Please be seated. And announcements from the congregation. Good morning, everyone. I am, can you guys hear me? I'm Caitlin Roberts. I'm the director of Christian Formation here at St. Matthews. A couple quick announcements. Christian Formation starts back this morning. We have classes for elementary age children, for our youth, and for adults as well. Elementary is fourth grade to fifth grade. Children, Godly Play class can come with me. Um, tonight, EYC will start back. EYC is our Episcopal Youth Committee. Uh, this is for 6th through 12th grade. We're going to be meeting at the bowling alley at 5.30. Um, so bring money for shoes and for bowling. Dinner will be provided. Speaking of dinner, um, uh, we, de we need someone to um, reach into their pockets, reach into their heart, and donate money for our youth's dinner tonight. We also have a sign-up out in uh, the hallway, sort of across from the nursery, for dinner angels for the subsequent Sundays. So EYC will meet in the evenings. They are hungry, and uh, if you feel like um, serving uh, these kids, uh, provide them uh, a meal or um, donate money where we can actually go out and purchase the, Just the food ourselves. Just don't get your hands near their mouth. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> 
20 plus kids. Um, there's more information out there as well um, if you're wondering about uh, being a dinner angel. We also have some information out, out there about some diocesan events for the youth as well. We have a lock-in coming up for high schoolers. It's going to be at Christ Church in Greenville. We have a diocesan lock-in for middle schoolers that's going to be towards the end of October. That'll be in Columbia. Sutton is going to that. So if you have middle schoolers and are wondering about how am I going to do a ride or whatever, there's somebody already headed that way. Um, and we also have on September September the 25th, an EYC field trip where we will be meeting at the Advent at 3.30 and riding, them to, uh, riding with them to St. Peter's in Greenville for a little bit of a diocesan, local diocesan event with the youth. So, and there's information out there about that as well. And I think that's all I have to announce today. The little ones can, or excuse me, the younger children, I like to call it little. Bible bread and wine today at 5.30. Good morning, everybody. I'm Scott Garber with the Brotherhood of St. Matthews. I want to remind all men of the parish and all men of the Brotherhood that this Tuesday evening at 6.30 in the conference room, we'll have our uh, September meeting at 6.30 p.m. Um, uh, I'll go as far to say that uh, Tuesday is uh, mine and my wife's uh, 25th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, miracles do happen. Uh, <laughs> but in the meantime, um, I would like to remind anybody that has ever, all, all men of the parish that have per participated in the Brotherhood of St. Matthews that no longer come or participate, uh, and I would like to let make sure that all men of the parish uh, uh, are aware of the fact that you are welcome to come join us at our meeting. I will be there, anniversary or not. Ooh. And, uh, but I have advanced uh, permission. For that. Okay. <laughs> In the meantime, all men are invited to come join us at our meeting. We'll have a wonderful spiritual lesson uh, from uh, our, our brother David uh, and uh, Rutledge, and uh, we um, will we'll, all our everything that we all the funds we raise and everything all go towards uh, towards uh, charitable uh, outreach programs and such like that, uh, help the church and such like that. Uh, Brother David is about to uh, uh, talk yes, about where some of those golf, funds go. And speaking of golf, did you say something about golf? I did say something. Well, I almost did. On the 23rd, yes, it's coming up. It's coming up Friday, 1 o'clock, Village Greens. Tea time. I talk so loud anyway, people. People don't even want to hear it. Your envelope is out there. You can still put your 25 bucks in, and you can still drop it in the plate, and you can still sign up to play golf. We're doing pretty good. On the way out, I want you to notice, okay, all the people that have contributed to us so far in the form of a sign. I have them lined up outside. And I want to thank those people already. They will be at the golf course, and I will feature them this week, next week, uh, and at the golf course. And we really appreciate what they have done for us in terms of their sponsorship. And some of those folks are either parishioners themselves that got their companies to do it, okay, and actually groups from our church that individuals have decided to throw a sign in, like EFM, for example, all right? That, that nothing to do with, you know, EFM paying for it. It's individuals in that group that decided to do that. So we are very thankful for that. That is our major fundraiser. So... Sign up. More foursomes, the better. So we're going to miss you, boss. It's Talk going to be a good one. Yeah, I will not be in attendance this year. The bishop is requiring us, all the clergy of the diocese, to go spend three days with him at Seabrook Island. Dead gum. Uh, pray for the clergy. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.